JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to, JF to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week March the 21st until March the 25th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have uh, a relatively lighter calendar this week than the previous one, uh, but yet uh, investors will keep their eyes uh, locked on developments surrounding uh, the war in Ukraine. But besides that, we also have uh, some important items on the agenda, including a speech by ECB President Lagarde, a speech by Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell. We also have the UK CPIs for February, the preliminary PMIs for March uh, from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. And we have a central bank decision as well. Uh, it is a time of the Swiss National Bank to decide on, on interest rates um, uh, this week. But let's take things from the beginning. Uh, today, there are no top tier data releases on the agenda, but we have speeches from uh, ECB President Christine Lagarde and Fed Chair Jerome Powell. So let's get the ball rolling with Lagarde. At the latest ECB gathering, she and her colleagues decided to end their uh, APP program in the third quarter without uh, hinting that any interest rate hikes will be delayed due to the war in Ukraine. Lagarde said that the risks to the economic outlook have to the economic outlook have increased substantially, but she also added that inflation could consider uh, could uh, be considerably higher uh, um, than forecast. So, in our view, this suggests that she believes the risk of high inflation outweighs outweighs concerns over how geopolitics could affect economic growth. However, this was 10 days ago, and with the war in Ukraine still raging, it will be interesting to hear what she has to say now. Even if she, re if she reiterates a similar message to the one we got from the latest ECB decision, expectations around the bank's future plans could well be altered by the euro area PMIs scheduled to be released on Thursday. Now, passing the ball to the to Fed Chair Jerome Powell, we expect him to reiterate the hoggish the hoggish uh, message we got at the latest FOMC gathering. After all, the meeting took place took place just last week, and we don't believe that Powell will deviate from that view so quickly. Remember that the committee decided to lift interest rates by 25 basis points, while the new dot plot pointed to six more liftoffs by the end of the year. At the press uh, conference following the decision, Powell himself said that the economy is strong enough to weather those rate hikes while maintaining strong hiring and wage growth. And added, and he added that if they conclude uh, that it would be appropriate to move more quickly to remove accommodation, then they will do so. Uh, in other words, summarizing, Powell was hoggish. We expect him to stay hoggish, but market-wise, uh, we don't believe that this will come as a surprise and affect uh, and uh, result in uh, major market moves. Now, on Tuesday, we will get to hear from uh, more Fed officials. Uh, now, having in mind that as a group, they anticipated um, six more quarter-point rate hikes by the end of the year, it will be interesting to hear some individual views so we can put faces 
to some of the dots on the updated uh, to on the updated uh, dot plot. This could help us have a clearer picture on how the Fed's plans may be affected in case uh, someone change their mind or in, in case someone changed their mind in in the not too distant future. Now, besides uh, speeches by monetary policy officials, we will continue monitoring the developments surrounding the war in Ukraine. Remember that last week we got headlines that there has been some progress in the negotiations between Russia and, Russian and Ukrainian diplomats, but with both sides adding that they are still uh, far apart. Now, today Ukraine rejected um, uh, Russian calls to surrender the port city of uh, Mariupol in exchange for safe passage out of the city. And it remains to be seen how this will affect uh, diplomacy efforts moving forwards. Now, with regards to the financial markets, most equity indices remained supported on Friday, with Asia pulling back only slightly today, despite the fact that the war is still raging. Maybe some participants remain optimistic that some further progress could be made given the willingness of both sides to continue negotiating, or maybe they believe that no other nation will need to get involved militarily and that the conflict uh, at a two nations level has been already priced in. It, it remains to be seen, it remains to be seen. Now on Wednesday, during the European, uh, during the European uh, morning, we get the UK CPIs for February, with uh, both the headline and core rates expected to have continued rising. Specifically, the headline rate is forecast to have inched up to 5.9% year over year from 5.5%, while the core one is forecast to have risen to 4.8% from 4.4%. At last week's meeting, Bank of England officials decided to hike interest rates by another 25 basis points via an 8 to 1 voting, with the descender calling for no increase at all. Remember that at the February gathering, officials lifted uh, rates by 25 basis points as well, but the vote was 5 to 4, with the four descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. Now, compared to that, last week's decision reveals a more cautious approach by policymakers and raises questions as to whether they will indeed proceed as aggressive as the market has been pricing in heading into the gathering. That said, accelerating inflation further above the bank's target of 2% could revive expectations that the bank may need to act more quickly, something that could prove supportive uh, for the British pound, at least at the time of the release. The pound could uh, receive extra support uh, on Wednesday by Chancellor Rishi Sunak, as uh, when making his uh, spring budget statement, uh, he could announce more measures to help households and small businesses in the midst of uh, surging fuel and other prices. Now, as for the rest of Wednesday's uh, data, the only one uh, worth mentioning is the new is the U.S. new home sales for February, with the forecast pointing to a small increase compared to January. Now, on Thursday, the spotlight is likely to fall on the preliminary market PMIs for March. We get the manufacturing, services, and composite indices from the eurozone, the UK, and the U.S. And they may provide the first glimpse as to how those major those major economies have been affected by the war in Ukraine. Expectations are for uh, small declines in all indices, but we see the case for negative surprises as uh, more likely in the European and uh, UK uh, in, in the eurozones and UK indices. Uh, big disappointments could raise questions as to whether the ECB and the Bank of England should prioritize stopping accelerating inflation instead of supporting economic growth. This could add selling pressure to the euro and the pound, while the opposite may be true in case the numbers come close or above their forecasts. So, uh, up until now, we believe that uh, in case we have negative surprises in the PMIs, the euro could uh, come under renewed selling interest and continue its journey south. But with regards to the pound, on the one hand, we have the CPIs on Wednesday, which could prove supportive. On the other hand, we, we have the PMIs on uh, Thursday, which could uh, result in the British currency giving back any 
CPI related gains. Uh, uh, so the picture with regards to the pound is more blurry, uh, in my opinion. We also have a central bank deciding on uh, monetary on monetary policy on Thursday, and um, and this is the Swiss National Bank. Although inflation in Switzerland is slightly above two percent, at two point two percent year over year, uh, the rate is well behind other major economies like the eurozone, the UK, and the US. And thus, we don't believe that Swiss policymakers will signal willingness to lift interest rates soon. Also, with the, the euro Swiss franc um, rate staying in a downtrend mode since uh, January uh, last year, despite the latest recovery which started on March uh, 8th, we believe that uh, officials will maintain accommodative, uh, accommodating monetary policy, uh, reiterating, their willing, uh, reiterating their willingness to intervene in the FX market if deemed necessary. So, uh, we expect them to deliver the same message as previously, that the Swiss franc is highly valued, that they are ready to intervene in the FX market as deemed necessary, but we don't expect them to signal any willingness uh, to make any change to interest rates. Uh, and um, in my opinion, the Swiss franc is very unlikely to be uh, moved by, by this decision. Now, finally, on Friday, the main items on the agenda are the UK retail sales for uh, for February uh, and the German IFO survey for March. In the UK, both uh, the headland core sales are forecast to have um, to have slowed to 0.8 and 1 percent month over month, respectively, from 1.9 and 1.7 percent. While in Germany, both the current assess, both the, excuse me, both the current assessment and expectations indices are forecast to decline, taking the business climate uh, index down to 94 from 98.9. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching, for being here, for watching and um, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next, uh, next Monday. Now, if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 o'clock a.m. GMT time. So goodbye, have a great day and a greater rest of uh, the week. JFT, just fair and direct.